Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Rejuvenate Church online worship experience. I am yours truly, Pastor Denisha. Our lead pastor is Pastor Darren. We're excited to be back with you all on this beautiful Sabbath afternoon. We are inviting you. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to give you a few moments to allow you all to start registering on there. We officially start at 12 noon. We are just excited about what God is doing, still celebrating God for the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is amazing. God is phenomenal. God is awesome. So we're asking you share, share, invite those of you who are part of the rejuvenation. Please make sure that our fellow rejuvenate worshipers are able to join in this afternoon. I am just excited. This is Rejuvenate Church where life is rejuvenated. Our model, refresh, revive, renew. Come on in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As you guys are joining, how have your week been? How has things been for you? Glory. Hallelujah. How is everything going with you? I know that things have been different because uh, we've been in restriction, we've been quarantined and all of this, but I know God has still proven that he's faithful over and over and over again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on in, come on in. We're going to go into prayer in about one minute. One more moment, we will be praying. Come on in. This is Rejuvenate Church. Good, Sister Esther. So glad to know things have been going well with you. So good to know things have been going well. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. Hallelujah. Come on in. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get started with the word of prayer asking that you all pray with us that God would just have his way. I know this is a little different uh, doing things virtually, but God is yet in control and he's able to meet us wherever we are. So let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this afternoon thanking you and praising you for what you have done, what you are doing and what you are going to do. You have been so faithful, so kind. You have been so wonderful. And we take this time just to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us to see another day that was not promise. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning, clothed and in our right mind, with the activity of our limbs, with an attitude of gratitude. Thank you for the opportunity to still reach out to you, to still call on your name and know that you hear us. You hear us when we cry. Not only do you hear us, but you're ready to rescue us from every situation and every circumstance. Father, we give you reverence right now for the opportunity to be called your sons and your daughters. Father, we thank you and we praise you for life and life rejuvenated, life and life renewed. We give your name reverence, God, for the changes that are taking place in our lives today. We give you glory and we give you honor. We're asking, Father, even as we are joined together in this virtual worship, that you would be with us, that you would demonstrate your power. We're asking, Lord God, that you would meet us wherever we are. Somebody is in their home. Someone may be in their car. Someone may be with a friend. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Someone may be watching via a hospital bedroom, but I pray in Jesus' name that the spirit of the living God would rest, rule, and abide, God, wherever we are. Send your anointing, God. Saturate your people in the name of Jesus. Allow the refreshing wind of the Holy Spirit to rest in the name of Jesus, demonstrating your power to save, demonstrating your power to heal, demonstrating your power to restore, demonstrating your power to encourage. Do God what only you can do in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. We are lost without you. We are nothing without you. We are hopeless without you. We are without strength without you. So we ask in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen, that you would revive, that you refresh, that you would renew 
in the name of Jesus. God, for we need you. We need you more than ever before. We need you, God, to interrupt the cycles that we find ourselves in. We need you, God, to interrupt, oh God, the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Interrupt sickness that we find ourselves fighting with poverty that keeps trying to knock on our door. Interrupt, God, the plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. God will be so careful to give you reverence. We'll be careful to give you praise. We'll be careful to give you glory and honor today in the name of Jesus. Father, we reverence you. Hallelujah. We glorify your name for you are great and you do miracles great. You are great. Hallelujah. And you do wonders great. You are great and you do wonders great. We give you reverence for the opportunity to worship you today. We ask in Jesus' name that you have your way. Move, God, by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Again, we welcome you today. Thank you for joining us. This is Rejuvenate Church. Hallelujah. Where we are refreshed, revived, renewed. This is where life is rejuvenated. There's a song that I've been thinking about this week, and it's just called Atmosphere Shift. Hallelujah. It's just called Atmosphere Shift. And it's real simple. It just says there is only one name with power to save. How many know that that name is Jesus? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you all to just be praying with me as I attempt this song today. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. Oh, with power to save. Yeah. Oh, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. Power to save. Oh, 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 and our God is champion. He reigns forevermore. Oh, yes, he does. Forevermore. Oh. second verse says, every knee will bow down. Oh yes it will. Every tongue confess Jesus Christ. You are Lord. Come on, I'll sing that one more time. It says, every knee will bow down. Every knee will bow down. Oh, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, oh yes you are, you are Lord, oh yeah, our God, our God is champion, he reigns. Shift now, 
chains be broken, break out. Holy Spirit, come down. Heaven open, heaven open. Atmosphere shift, shift now. Chains be broken, break out. Holy Spirit, come down. Heaven open, heaven open. Atmosphere shift now. Chains broken, break now. Come down, heaven open, heaven open, atmosphere shift now, chains be broken, break down, Holy Spirit, come down. is champion and he reigns forevermore hallelujah jesus forevermore come on one more time our god is our god is champion and he reigns forevermore forevermore come on will you bless him right there today hallelujah will you bless the lord right there with me our god is champion. The song reminds us that he is conqueror. He is ruler. He is mighty. There is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing too difficult for God. He is champion. He cannot fail. He always wins. He is God victorious. He is the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. God is champion, the one who saves us, the one who redeems us, the one who heals us, the one who restores us. Our God is champion. Somebody say he's my champion. He's my champion. What is a champion? He is a victor. He always wins. He never loses. He is our champion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What I love the most about that song is where it goes into the vamp and we begin to declare atmosphere now. We've declared who God is. We've declared that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But now we get to that point that we've recognized who he is. We begin to declare atmosphere now. You've got to shift. Chains have got to be broken. Hallelujah. We're asking now now, Holy Spirit, come down in heaven. Open up right now in the name of Jesus. Atmosphere shift, shift now. I don't know what it's like in your home. I don't know what the atmosphere is. Maybe you've been dealing with an atmosphere that has confusion. Maybe you've been dealing with an atmosphere that's full of doubt. Maybe you've been dealing with an atmosphere that has you nervous and it's full of fear. But I dare you, wherever you are, command your atmosphere to shift, shift, shift. Atmosphere shift. Now, hallelujah, chains has to break. Glory to God, hallelujah. When the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Chains have to break. Yokes have to be, have to be destroyed forever. Glory to God, hallelujah. And as you guys know, I'm already excited. 
I'm already excited. I just begin to allow that song to minister to me. I don't know what you've dealt with this week. I don't know what you've had going on, but atmospheres shift. Sometimes it seems like we have a little cloud hanging over us. It seems like we're dealing with a little more than we need to be dealing with, but atmosphere shift right now. Hallelujah. Change you got to break. I can't stay bound by this. I can't be bound by this situation. I can't be bound by this circumstance. Fear can't continue to hold on to me. It's got to shift. It's got to move. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What does it mean to shift? It means to change the emphasis, direction, or focus of. That thing been focusing on me too long. That situation that's been bounding, been, been on me too long. It's got to shift. It's got to move. It's got to become something different. It's got to transform into something different. We've been dealing with this for too long. Shift now. It's got to shift. It's got to shift. It's got to shift. I'm snatching my earring off. It's got to shift. Hallelujah. It's got to change. Something new has to happen. Something different has to come into being. It has to change. It has to shift. It has to move. Atmosphere shift. Glory to God. As I was thinking of that song, there is, there is just a passage of scriptures that I was looking at. And the thought that I'm going to talk about today and you all know I'm never very long. The thought that I'm going to talk about today is the shift. Hallelujah. The shift. Glory to God. This, somebody just say the shift. When things have to shift, things have to change. We're in a position, we're in a season where things have to change. The shift. And it's coming whether you see it or not. It's coming whether you recognize it or not. It's coming whether you believe it or not. Things have to change. Things got to shift. Glory to God. We're still in the season. This is our post-resurrection celebration. We're in this season now where Christ has already risen from the dead. And I'm going to pick up where we left off last week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The shift. It's got to shift. My atmosphere has to shift. Glory to God. Our health has to shift. The world of this, this, this nation, the way things are going around us, it's got to shift. It's got to change. It's got to, it's got to become different. It's got to shift. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's got to make or become different. It's got to change its direction. Something new has to happen. Glory to God. It can't stay this way always. We can't continue the way we've been going forever. Things have got to change. Shift, 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 shift. We're looking at St. John chapter 20 verses 19 through 22 talking about shifting. Glory to God. Talking about shifting, how things change. And I know this passage of scriptures, you may not quite see where it is right now, but we're going somewhere. Glory to God. And I, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. It says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Uh-huh. For fear of the Jews. Um, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we're talking about the shift. We're talking about things shifting, things changing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just to give you a little context. Now we've also, we've already celebrated the fact that Christ died for us and that he rose again on the third day. Here we are in verse 19, the disciples, the followers of Christ, those who have been following him for a while now, they were at a place where they had hopes. They had high expectation that Jesus was the one that was going to change them. Jesus was the one that was going to change their situation. Situation. Jesus was the one who was going to turn things around. They had high hopes. So here we find ourselves Sunday evening, the day that Christ rises from the dead. This is the evening we're in. And these disciples have gathered together and they're hiding in a room with doors shut. They're behind closed doors and they're bars on this door. 
hiding for fear of the Jews. Glory to God, hiding for fear of the Jews. Bless the name of Jesus. I imagine that they remembered everything that Jesus had just went through. They saw how they came to the Garden of Gethsemane, how Jesus was betrayed by Judas and how they had taken him and how they had lied on him and how they had mistreated him, how they had posed him up to be crucified. So then they beat him and they watched as their hope. They watched as their savior, as the one who they believed was going to change everything was crucified and died. They watched as the one who they saw walk on water. This was the one who raised Lazarus from the dead. This was the one who we had hopes. This was the one who we declared was the son of God. And now he's gone. If they did this to Jesus, what are they going to do to me? If they crucified him, what are they going to do to us? So they're behind closed doors. They've quarantined themselves. They're hidden behind still doors so that nobody can come in. And in the midst of all of this, Jesus appears. Hallelujah. Jesus appears to them in the midst of their seclusion, in the midst of their hiding out. Jesus, hallelujah, appears. I don't know where you are or what your situation is, but I don't want you to feel that you're in a position where Jesus cannot come right where you are. Hallelujah. I don't know what your circumstance is, but you're not too far. I don't know what city you're in, but you're not too distant where Jesus can appear in the middle of your situation. Here they are bound by fear of what the Jews are about to do. Glory to God. And Jesus appears. He appears with a greeting and he says to them, peace. Glory to God. He says, peace be with you. This particular peace, this Greek, this Greek understanding of peace. The word here is arene. It's similar to the meaning of the Hebrew word shalom. Hallelujah. And this particular meaning is peace wholeness or completion. So he stands up. Have you ever been in a position where you lost someone that was so close to you that it felt like a piece of you went with them? Glory to God. Jesus appears to them and he gives them peace, wholeness, completion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. He begins to show them the wounds in his hands. And he begins to show them the wounds in his side. So now he's allowed them to see that he is the one that they think he is. He, he gives them his identity. And immediately all of their fear is gone and they begin to rejoice. Something about when you know that God is with you. It's something about when you know that he's still a present help in the time of trouble. In the midst of a time where you're afraid. In the midst of a time where you're dealing with sadness. Where you're dealing with loneliness or whatever your situation is. When it actually gets to a point where you realize he is there with you. Peace. I got the ability to rejoice. I'm happy to know that he's by my side. I'm happy to know that he's here because if he's with me, everything is going to be all right. Glory to God. So the disciples immediately begin to rejoice and to magnify his name and to celebrate the fact that he's still here. We thought it was over for us. We thought they were coming for us, but Jesus, you're here. Wait a minute. How can you be here? When we saw them nail you to the cross, how can you be with me? When I saw you die, how can you still be with me? Glory to God. When the resurrection took place, everything shifted. Hallelujah. We're still talking about the shift. When Jesus got up from the grave, everything had to change. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. When Christ died and was buried, it shook the city. It shook those who have heard of him. It shook those who have finally started to believe that this was the Messiah. Remember a few weeks ago when we talked about Hosanna, how his followers, different ones, came out in the street and began to worship him and cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. They began to worship him saying, save now. You are redeemer. Save now. Deliver now. They began to give him worship and praise because they believed that he was about to change their condition. Well, this same Jesus who they were believing was changing their condition. They saw, they heard, they realized they got him and he's gone. So it's death and his burial shook 
the nation. It shook the city. Glory to God. But something changed when he rose from the dead. Something shifted when he got up. Hallelujah. Something transformed when he got up from the grave. The shift. Glory to God. Things began to break open when he rose up from the grave. There was a shifting. The world changed. Life as we know it has never been the same. Glory to God. Life as we know it has been forever changed because he got up. Hallelujah. One of the main things that changed when Christ got up from the grave, hallelujah, was he now introduced salvation through faith into the world. Glory to God. He introduced salvation through faith. We're no longer dealing with the old covenant. He's ushered us into the new covenant. Now we have personal relationship with our Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the veils were ripped. We are now able to call on the name of Jesus for ourselves, and we know that he hears us and we know that he's answering us. Something shifted. Something changed forever. Glory to God. Since he rose from the grave, we know now that by his stripes we are healed. Since he rose from the grave, we know that by the womb in his side we are healed. We we know, hallelujah, glory to God. Things are never going to be the same again. Things are never going to be the same again because he's alive. Bless the name of Jesus. So we now have salvation through faith. We have grace and mercy for by grace, we have been saved by our faith. And the end of salvation is eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Christ, our sacrifice on the cross, championed over death. He championed over the grave. He championed over sickness. He championed, glory to God, hallelujah. He championed over everything that wanted to keep us bound. He became a champion for us. God, our conqueror. God, our deliverer. God, our restorer. God, our redeemer. He came in and changed everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Revelations 1 and 18 says, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Jesus, glory to God, through one sacrifice, eliminated the dead of sin for us. Glory to God. For Romans lets us know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through his death. Glory to God and his resurrection. He's given us a gift. Glory to God. Now we don't have to live in fear. Now we don't have to live in darkness. Now we don't have to live without hope. We don't have to be hopeless because God has given us a gift. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A gift of eternal life. And the only thing you have to do is believe. Glory to God. All we've got to do is believe this gift now doesn't require us to sacrifice a lamb. This gift now doesn't require us to kill doves. This gift now, hallelujah, all we have to do with this gift is say, Lord, I believe. Bless the name of Jesus. God, I believe. Hallelujah, Lord, I believe. Bless the name of Jesus. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose. I believe that you're coming again. God, I believe there's hope for me now. We don't sorrow as those who have no hope. There's hope. Glory to God, you died that I might have hope, that I might have the ability to hold on to you. I might have the ability to have relationship and right relationship with you. He's given me hope. Bless the name of Jesus. Let me get back to his scripture. Glory to God. So Jesus now appears to his disciples with the word of peace. And with this word of peace, this word that gives completeness and wholeness, with this word of peace, hallelujah, he now gives them an assignment. Verse 21 says, Bless the name of Jesus. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I now am sending you. Glory to God. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. I've got an assignment for you. 
Bless the name of Jesus. You've been following me for a while now. You've been in training for a while now, but I've now got an assignment for you. Your level is about to change. Glory to God. Your ministry is about to shift. There's an assignment. Glory to God. There's an assignment that I'm placing on your life. There's a mandate that I'm giving you. There's a mandate that you must now choose to accept. So Jesus tells his disciples, glory to God. Now I'm shifting you. I'm shifting you from disciples. I'm shifting you from simply being followers. And I'm giving you an anointing as an apostle. I'm shifting you into leadership. And I'm giving you an instruction. Now you're to go out throughout the nations. And you are to share the good news. You are to preach the death, burial, and resurrection. You are to let the people know that there is hope. You are to let the people know that there is one true living God. Hallelujah. And it is Yahshua. It is Yahweh. It is Elohim. You are to preach starting at Jerusalem. Go. Hallelujah. Throughout the world and let them know that I'm here and that I'm alive. Let them know that there is hope for you. Let them know that there is peace. Let them know that there is joy in Jesus. He's shifting us. Glory to God. He's shifting us. Hallelujah. From purpose to purpose. Hallelujah. From assignment to us. He's shifting you. Glory to God. I'm sure you've just been used to going to church. I'm sure. Hallelujah. You've just been used to reading your Bible and praying. I'm sure you're used to doing what you're doing. You're used to simply ushering in the back, but he's shifting you. There's another level. There's another place you have to get to. There's another level of anointing he wants to give you. He's shifting you. Glory to God. Go, go be a witness. Go preach the word. Go give the message. Go. Somebody needs to know right now that Jesus loves them and you're the one to tell them. Go let somebody know that there's a future in Christ. Let somebody know that Christ died for them. Let somebody know that they don't have to continue in the way that they've been. Let somebody know that there's healing in the name of Jesus. Let somebody know that there's peace in the name of Jesus. They need to hear your testimony. They need to see what you saw. They need to hear what you went through. They need to know that you've walked with Jesus and you've seen him move in your life. They need to know Glory to God that I was once bound, but now I've been made free. They need to know that when I was sick, he healed me. They need to know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we can ask or think. Somebody today needs to know that there is hope in our Savior. Somebody today needs to know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus that he's a friend to the friendless. They need to know that he's a mother to the motherless. That he's a father to the fatherless. That when you're alone and by yourself, somebody needs to know that he'll be a company keeper. Somebody needs to know that he's a bridge over troubled water. They need your testimony today. They need your testimony. Your testimony. It's your testimony that's going to reach them. It's your testimony that's going to encourage them. They need to know that you were about to be homeless and on the street. And at the last minute, the Lord gave gave you the person to call and you had a place to live. They need to know that you were without food, that you were without water and somebody knocked on your door with groceries. They need to know that you were unemployed and didn't know how your needs was going to be met. But God demonstrated his power as Jehovah Jireh, God who provides. They need to know. They need to know. They need to know. They need to know that you were broken and that you were without strength and one day Savior found you in your sins and pulled you up and he loved on you. He needs, he needs, he needs to hear your testimony. They need to know right now. Glory to God. They need to know right now. Glory to God. They need to know right now from you. They need to hear your voice. I've been through some things. I've seen some things, but I didn't go through it for no reason. I went through what I went through because you needed to know that God is Abraham. He's the same God who was, the same God who is, and the same God who is 
to come. He is Yahweh, the one who can do, who will do, who shall do. He's able to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. They need to hear about how you gave your life to Christ. They need to know about how you decided to live for the Lord. Somebody needs to know what drew you down to the altar. Glory, somebody needs to know. Hallelujah, that it didn't have to be this way, but God himself, full of compassion towards you, met you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. He met you. Look at this, Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God demonstrated straight his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners Christ died for us somebody needs to hear you tell them how Christ died for you and how while you were still in your mess while you were still on the bottle while you were still messing with the, messing with the drugs or whatever you were doing while you were still running the streets that God touched your heart right there I've heard countless people tell me that they haven't given their life to Christ because they have too much to change I've had countless people let me know that they've not accepted Christ as their savior because they still have habits and they don't know that they can stop but somebody needs to hear your testimony how while you still had habits you called on the name of the Lord and he came into your heart right then and he changed you from the inside out somebody needs to hear your testimony today there's a shift that's happening right now. He's shifting us, glory to God, and to a greater purpose. He's shifting you, giving you a greater assignment. It's time now. It's time now. It's time now, glory to God, for you to be the witness, for you to go. Bless the name of Jesus. It's time for you to be the one to share what God has done while I was still in my mess, Christina. He picked me up and turned me around while I was still in my mess. Thank you, God. He didn't have to do it, but his love covers a multitude of sins. There's somebody right now who's on the street doing everything that they shouldn't be doing because they're looking for a void to be filled. Hallelujah. They're searching for a feeling. They're searching for something to make them feel complete. They're searching for something to make them feel whole. Glory. Hallelujah. They're searching. Hallelujah. And they're not finding it in the bottle. They're not finding it in the cocaine. They're not finding it in the street. They're not finding it in the beds of others. You need to be the one to tell them that Jesus, he's the answer. Jesus it's the way. Glory to God. You need to be the one that let them know that you were in the same position, that you had a void that needed to be filled, but you called on the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. And he came into your life and put you back together again. He made you whole and he made you new. He delivered you from the unclean thing. Somebody needs to hear your testimony today. Bless the name. Hallelujah of Jesus. Glory to God. So Jesus begins to let the disciples know that I have an assignment for you. And even as my father has sent me, now I'm sending you. Glory to God. The word sent here in Greek is ap apostelos. Hallelujah. It's to commission, set apart for a special service, send a message by someone, send out with a mission to fulfill, to equip and dispatch one with full backing and the authority of the sender. What am I saying? That the Lord is sending you now. Glory to God with authority. He's sending you and he wants you to know that as he sends you, he's got your back. Go where he tells you to go. Say what he tells you to say. Do what he tells you to do. Maybe you're not called to preach, but you may be called to be a help to somebody else. Maybe you're not called as an apostle, but maybe you're the one who's called to intercession. Maybe you're not called as an evangelist, but maybe you're the one who called to lay hands on the sick. Do the work of God today. Hallelujah. Do what he's calling you to do. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. As Jesus is 
ministering this to the disciples. They didn't realize that they were being elevated from followers to leaders. They didn't realize that they were graduating from disciples to apostles. Jesus next, he began to breathe his breath on them. And he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Here now is where the work of the Holy Spirit begins to operate as the spirit of life. Hallelujah. It's right at that moment that their lives are forever shifted. Their lives are forever changed. Glory to God. Some will say that they were born again. Hallelujah. Their lives are forever changed. Jesus gives them an instruction. I'm sending to you now a comforter. I'm sending to you the promise of the Holy Spirit. Go to Jerusalem for there shall be a fulfillment. Hallelujah. I don't know. Glory to God, where you are or what you have going on right now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. But I want you to be encouraged today. And I want you to know that God is with you and that God is sending you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's so easy for us to feel like because we're not the ones behind the pulpit, because we're not the ones doing thus and such, we're not the ones teaching the lessons and doing all the things that we see others doing, that there's nothing for us to do in Christ. But he's anointing you for purpose. He's anointing you for mission. He's anointing you to witness. Be a witness to somebody today. Let somebody know, glory to God, that God is yet able that God is yet saving, that God is yet delivering. Maybe you need to be the one that call and encourage your sister. Maybe you need to be the one that call and encourage your brother. You don't know how God wants to use you in this season. He's shifting you. Hallelujah. We can't grow stale where we are. It's easy being stuck at home to eat popcorn and watch movies. It's easy being stuck at home to snack on little Debbie and just chill and relax. But he's shifting you. You cannot grow stale. It's time for us to grow in our maturity. It's time for us to step up. It's time for us to go to the next level. Glory to God. Everything is changing. Life as you know it will never be the same again. Glory to God. Life as we know it is changing forever. And God wants to use you. He wants to use you. My question to you is, will you let him? Will your answer to the Lord be yes? Hallelujah. Will your answer to the Lord be yes? When he's calling you, and he's saying, I'm sending you. Hallelujah. When he's calling you and he's saying that I'm choosing you. When he's calling you and when he's saying, I want you to go. When he whispers in your ear, your next assignment, will your answer be yes? God, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do. They used to sing an old song. It says, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer, hallelujah. What will your answer be today? Maybe you've not chosen Christ as your Savior today. This is a wonderful time to choose God. He's calling you. He's reaching for you. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful time. To choose him as your personal savior. Will you be the one that says, Father, I believe that Jesus is the son of God and he died for me. And I just want to be in relationship. I just want to be in covenant with him. I just want to be in, in, in partnership with him. I want him to live in my heart. Will you be the one today that will accept his love? Will you be the one that will accept his sacrifice? He loves you so much that in spite of your habits, in spite of your ups and your downs, in spite of your mess, he died so that he can be in relationship with you. All he wants is relationship. Will you be the one? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you be the one that tells him yes today? Yes, Lord, 
I'll do whatever you want me to do. Yes, Lord, I want you in my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. God, I accept you. Will you be the one? Hallelujah. I'm going to open up for prayer right now. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm going to open up the line for prayer. This is a time for us to pray together. What is it that you need God to do for you? Are you struggling with your yes? Are you afraid to tell God yes? Glory to God. I want you to remember in our text that the disciples were hiding out because they feared the Jews. There was fear trying to keep them bound. But when Jesus appeared, when they realized that Jesus was among them, that Jesus was with them, that he was still Emmanuel, God with us. When they realized all fear left and they began to rejoice. I want you to know that God is with you wherever you are, whatever you're dealing with. Whatever your situation, God is with you. Hallelujah. And if he's with you, you have no reason to fear. I don't care what is going on. I don't care what the bills look like. I don't care what they're telling you. I don't care what the doctors are saying. If God is with you, you don't have a reason to fear. Hallelujah. For greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Hallelujah. I see your request, Sister Christina. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait another moment for those who want to give specific prayer requests. Bless the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. I believe God is still answering prayers. Glory to God. I believe God is still working miracles right now. I know. Matter of fact, I know that he's still performing signs and wonders. There is nothing too hard for our God to do. Hallelujah. And when you eliminate fear and when you eliminate doubt, bless the name of Jesus, you'll remember his word and it will register in your mind that there's no sickness that he cannot heal that there's no disease that he cannot cure, that there's no place he cannot reach you. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there with me. I don't care where you are. You're not too far for God to get to you. He's with you. Bless the name of Jesus. He's by your side. He's with you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now. We thank you for this word that you've given us, this word that lets us know that you're shifting us from one position to another, from one level to the next, from one place to the next. You're shifting us and you're just asking us to yield ourselves to you. So, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, as we begin to yield ourselves to you, that those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins would accept you. That they would come to know you. That, that this conversation today would spark a desire to learn more about you, Jesus. I'm praying today right now, oh God, that those who are asking for realignment, that the plan of God would be fulfilled in their life, that our ears would be made sensitive to your voice, that we can hear you speak and that when you speak, we will obey. We're asking, oh God, that you would continue to be with us, that you would remind your people that you're on our side, that you're fighting for us. That everything is going to be okay. Somebody needs to know today, God. Somebody needs strength and encouragement. We pray against fear and doubt right now. In the name of Jesus, we come against the assignment of fear and doubt that comes to keep us bound, that comes to make us feel like things are not going to go the way they are supposed to go. We come against in the name of Jesus. We release your peace, God. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest, rule, and abide in our hearts and our minds. Dwell among us. Dwell with us. Let the peace of God dwell in our homes. We come against the assignment of the enemy that comes to distract, that comes to move us away from your will and your word. We come against the assignment of the enemy right now that causes us to dwell in unbelief. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would stir up our faith like never before, that you would help us, God, to stand on every promise that you made us, that you would help us, God, to walk boldly in your word, that you would help us, God, to walk boldly in the spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us. Help us to know, God, that you're still a promise keeper. Help us to know, God, that you're still a way maker. Help us to know, God, that you're still moving mountains. I pray right now for every person who even touches this online stream. 
I'm praying, God, that you would meet them where they are and that you would allow the will of God to be perfect, perfectly done in their life in the name of Jesus. And God, we're going to be so careful to give you praise. I'm praying that you would stir up gifts on the inside of us, gifts that's been lying dormant. I'm praying that you would reveal ministries. I'm praying, oh God, that you would reveal it in our lives, that you would help us to see God, help us to know what it is you're calling us to do, that we may walk in it fearlessly in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you reverence. I pray for every leader. I pray that they would have revelation. We would have revelation. We would have guidance, discernment, and strength. During these times, I pray for those who are dealing with sickness in their body, those who are dealing with loved ones who have sickness. I'm praying right now that you would heal, that you would set free and that you would deliver, that you would demonstrate your power again. And God, we give you reverence and we give you praise. We thank you, oh God, that by the end of this quarantine, something is happening that may just spark a, a national revival that might just spark a worldwide revival where we're coming back to you. Draw us back to you, God, in the name of Jesus. And we give your name praise that it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. For those of you who've decided that this is the day you wanna give your life to Christ, simply repeat after me, Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. And Lord, I'm asking that you come into my heart. I'm asking that you save me. Forgive me, God, of my sins. Help me to live for you. I accept your love. And I thank you that right now I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you repeated that with me, you just gave your life to Christ. Welcome to the family you are saved if you don't have a church home rejuvenate church welcomes you pastor darren and myself are here with open arms visit us at www.newcovenantfaith.org or www.therejuvenatechurch.org we want to know about your conversion to christ send in your testimony Look right there on our webpage. Call us. Let us know that you've decided to give your life to Christ today. Hallelujah. We're excited. I believe that souls are being saved. I believe that people who have been struggling for a long time are being set free. I believe that God is still moving and he's still demonstrating his power in this hour. Hallelujah. God is He's able, don't forget, to do exceedingly abundantly above what you could ask or think. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We invite you to sow your gift, whether your offering or your tithe. Those who have not already sent their tithe in, you're able to tithe via Cash App or on one of the websites, www.newcovenantfaith.org or therejuvenatechurch.org. All tithing, all offering is tax deductible. We thank you again for joining us. This is Rejuvenate Church where life is rejuvenated. We invite you, call in and pray with us. We're having prayer every Monday night at 7 p.m. Every Thursday night is our Bible talk where we invite you to join the discussion. This past week, we talked about maintaining our focus on Christ. We talked about seeking God endlessly. If you look throughout the scripture, he's countlessly throughout the scripture letting you know that if you seek me, you'll find me. If you knock, the door will be open unto you. He's constantly inviting us to have relationship with him. Join us Thursday. Let's talk scripture. Let's talk Bible. Until then, this has been Rejuvenate Church. This has been Rejuvenate Church where life is rejuvenated, where you are refreshed, revived, and renewed. We pray you have a phenomenal rest of your week, and we'll see you on Monday. Shalom.